it's an experience, experiential approach that uses the relationship between horses and humans as the medium for psychological change. So if you think about any therapy that's using an exper experience, um, but we've got the added dimension of we're using a live, quite powerful animal. Um, and I think that leads me on to, you know, why do we use horses rather than chimpanzees, for example? You know, um, because horses um, are social animals, they're like humans. They live in herds or like in groups. And um, their survival dis depends on their instincts and their ability to tune into their instincts. Um, so because they're, they're a prey animal. So what happens in the arena or in the pasture is that horses become able to pick up on what humans are feeling and then they will do something with that. Um, for ex I'll give you an example. Um, you know, somebody comes into the uh, arena, um, which, you know, wouldn't, you know, being frightened might be a normal response to going into an arena with a number of horses. Um, and um, the horses do something, they move away or they start to move really quickly or they're really, you know, hypersensitive to the environment. But there isn't actually any danger there. So um, it's about using that experience. And, and in some ways, the arena is a bit like the, um, the, the client's life story. Um, so in TA, we're very, I'm very much thinking about script and life script and how that narrative gets played out in the arena that's really important um, and when you say arena i mean we're not talking about a normal a normal whatever that is counseling room with two chairs no. or a no we're not <laughs> what does an arena look like coral oh an arena look, i mean arena is you know we're lucky if you have an arena to use you know not everybody does have an arena basically is where people would ride so it's a it's a square area usually or a round area that has fencing around and it has a surface um a safe surface um but often, you know, and often I work in different places, so not everybody has an arena. We work in pasture, just in a small field, um, or, you know, I work a place in a place that's in a clearing in a wood, which is absolutely beautiful, and it has a stream going through it. So um, when I refer to arena, I don't necessarily mean that we're working in an arena. It's an arena or a pasture that I'm referring to. Yeah. So I think yeah. a, a safe space, really. Um so quite a, an a big open space, but it has a boundary to it. it. Might be fenced, or it might have like a tree line or something. Or... Yeah, it would yeah. definitely have a fence because you, if it, if you're working in the horse's pasture, you'd obviously need to keep them in. So it, you know, it, it has um, it has a boundary, which um, I think you know in in the in the sessions, you know, um, one of the key aspects of equine assisted psychotherapy is about it's um it. It's for it creates an opportunity for metaphorical learning. So it's about helping the client tell their story through interaction with the horses. And it is really quite hard to describe because it's a very much an experiential uh, experiential approach. Um, so, I mean, we are going to show a, vid a video soon, John, but I'm just thinking um, some of the other things that might be useful for you to know is that the Angala model, which... Um, I use is a team approach so it includes a, um, a mental health professional um, which is a qualified psychotherapist or a qualified counsellor and an equine specialist so the equine specialist focuses on the horse's behaviour and is responsible for safety and bringing the observations from the horses into the conversation in the team and the mental health professional is responsible for the clients and the treatment and the treatment direction and the team works together with the horses um, to help the client explore their goals or whatever it is. Um, yeah. So the, there's a team there with the I guess the client group, the therapist, the equine specialist. Yes. Yeah facilitating that conversation yeah so we're, this That's is bigger it, yeah. than the one-to-one -one kind of context i'm just kind of getting yeah. this yeah. in my mind facilitating that conversation which mm. is non-verbal normally and yes we help them to make sense of what meaning the horses will have 
when we use a number of horses usually in a in a in a in a session so we might use between one one and three horses because it offers the chance for the client to project onto the horses so we don't tell them you know this horse is called you know daisy or whatever we 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 you know we let them start we we start by an activity like go out and meet the horses, go and think, or we can go out and explore the space so it's that wide, um, and then we just watch that and observe that, and then when we talk with the clients, we're, we're interested in the story that's starting to unfold and what meaning that has for them, um, and in TA terms, are very much about script because um, the horses can be aspects of. So of someone, parts of parts of their personality. Uh, we could think in terms of ego states. Um, there could be significant relationships like partner, family, parents, um, and it, it's those. And it's being able to see um, their story at a distance that's also quite helpful.